bloodbath. There's going to be a bloodbath. And I mean that in a literal way. A bath all full of blood. And anyone who's ever said bloodbath must literally mean bath full of blood. And therefore, you can only elect one person, and that's Joe Biden, and still call it a democracy. Bloodbath. Bloodbath. There's a little thing in this world called context. <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage to truth and freedom. Remember to support our movement and keep me dressed like a pirate. You can click the link in the description. We do additional interviews every single week and make additional videos every single week. And if you support us, it will help us to continue to oppose the ludicrous lies and propaganda that are attempting to submerge every single story and prevent us from understanding reality in a way that's at least a little more reasonable. The bloodbath backlash is an extraordinary story. Trump used the phrase, the idiom, bloodbath in a speech. Of course, by now you will be aware that what he was talking about is the impact of car manufacturing and certain tariffs and if they move their manufacturer to this country. It was essentially a very particular use of the phrase. Admittedly, it's an evocative word, bloodbath, but you'll note and we'll show you that bloodbath is not the first time the phrase has ever been used and it's been used politically and relatively consistently. What I'm interested in most of all is how hysteria poses as rational rationalism these days. He said bloodbath. We told you he's planning to execute everybody the day after the election. What's extraordinary is we're being told that we're living in a democracy in which you can only vote for one person. How is that a democracy? And indeed, what is the greater threat to our freedom? Is it Donald Trump and his colourful rhetoric and populist posturing? Or is it a liberal media that is so determined to manage the outcome of the 2024 election that they've already written the stories and are just waiting for the opportunity to hang those stories on the hook of a casual use of, well, ultimately, metaphor. Because we're adults, and this isn't MSNBC, let's have a look at Trump's speech and then for ourselves decide, was he talking about tariffs that he might impose on China if they put their manufacturing in Mexico? Or was he saying, right, I'm going to bathe everybody in blood, their own blood, the day after the election. Then let's look at the hysterical reaction of the legacy media and determine what that tells us about this establishment. Mexico has taken over a period of 30 years, 34% of the automobile manufacturing business in our country. Think of it, went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think, that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line and you're not going to be able to sell those guys if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. Right, so there you go. That's a person speaking off the cuff about actually trade tariffs and imposing tariffs on China that would make the efficacy of manufacturing in Mexico somewhat redundant. So it's actually quite a dull <laughs> subject, which Donald Trump is in his usual rhetorical style, making illustrative and entertaining and captivating his working class blue collar audience who would likely prefer to have jobs in manufacturing, the kind of jobs that have migrated overseas in countries like yours and countries like mine. Another president of the United States who imposed harsh tariffs was Bill Clinton, who imposed such harsh tariffs on Haiti, it made their own rice agriculture redundant. We did a video on that. We'll throw to it at the end of this. It's brilliant. You'll love it. So essentially, Donald Trump is posturing and saying, don't build factories south of the border, thinking that you can make a bunch of money because we want manufacturing industry in this country. So to take from that, Bloodbath? What he means by that is plainly that there are going to be armed militia on the street. Forget that there are armed militia on the street in the Democrat-run New York City right now on the pretenses of protecting them. Ignore that fact. Forget that in Gaza right now, there is a what one might say is close to a literal bloodbath as it's possible to imagine being supported by the Democrat Party. Forget that hundreds of billions are being spent of your taxpayer dollars to sustain what I consider to be, and I think you do, an unwinnable war against the nuclear armed, newly elected Vladimir Putin. Forget all of those very real bloodbaths and let's focus on this metaphorical bloodbath used by a person when talking about trade tariffs. How desperate are they? How out of touch are they? How unwilling 
to present us with real democratic or constitutional Republican alternatives, are they, that this is what they will resort to? For the whole, that's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. OK, so let's see how the legacy media responded to that. You all know how you respond. I mean, for me, I wouldn't even notice that. Like, if I was watching that, I'd just go, oh, yeah, that seems like a good idea, right? Yeah, if you're trying to build up manufacturing, if, you know, part of your appeal and part of your function is to reach blue-collar Americans who are concerned about their jobs and the metropolitan elites are running America under the Democrats and that they're being left behind. Yeah, that's a sensible thing to say. Let's see how the legacy media have run with it. We begin tonight with the race for the White House and former President Trump's campaign now on the defensive after his fiery rhetoric at a rally in Dayton, Ohio on Saturday night. Trump warning while discussing the economy that there would be a, quote, bloodbath if he is not re-elected in November. That's amazing. So if you only watch that type of news, what you think Donald Trump said, if I don't win in November, there will be a bloodbath, i.e. I will transcend democracy and there will be an armed militia. Like, that's literally what we're being presented with. But those of us that have seen the speech, and that will now be a considerable audience, know that they're lying. And we know why they are lying. Tonight, Republicans forced to defend former President Donald Trump's controversial comment that there would be a bloodbath if he lost the 2024 election. I want to start by getting your reaction to Donald Trump's comments about a bloodbath. And made a dire prediction of what would happen if he is not. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. But if they weren't maliciously using it, they would show the context, wouldn't they? They'd go, well, he's talking about the car industry, actually. But perhaps he's somewhat evasively and peculiarly referring to armed militia. No, they don't. They go, cut that bit out where he's talking about the car industry. Otherwise, it will be perfectly plain, even to an imbecile, that what he's talking about is the, the Democrats wouldn't impose any such tariffs and industry will suffer further and more blue collar people will be without work. Now, I don't know what Trump's economic policy policies are. You could look at what happened when he was president for four years if you wanted to know the type of policies he would implement. That would be an interesting way of ascertaining the reality of a Trump presidency, you know, looking at what happened when he was president before. Was there a bloodbath then? That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll we can't make this content without your love and support and without the support of our sponsors who we always select on the basis of effective products like today's. Have you noticed that recently clusters of respiratory illnesses in northern China and what's been referred to as white lung syndrome in the United States are scattered across the headlines. This hashtag white lung. They're drawing attention, I believe, to the importance of being prepared for medical emergencies. With close to 90% of pharmaceuticals in the US being produced outside of the country, what will happen when the inevitable next global crisis strikes? Countries will clamp down on exports, they'll stockpile, the price of drugs will rise, and the pharmacy shelves in America, they say, will empty. Is it already starting to happen? Well, the Wellness Company's medical emergency kit has got you covered for times like this. The Wellness Company is home to Dr. Peter McCulloch and Dr. Drew Pinsky. They've both been guests on our show. They're truth-telling doctors who are empowering you to take control of your health. 40% of Americans say they would avoid a doctor or hospital unless it was a catastrophic situation. The Wellness Company's medical emergency kit provides a solution. This handy little kit includes eight potentially life-saving medications for you, along with a guidebook for safe use, emergency anti antibiotics, antivirals and antiparasitics to keep you and your family safe in the face of natural disasters, supply chain shortages or medical emergencies like white lung or COVID. Go to twc.health forward slash brand and grab your medical emergency kit right now. That's twc.health forward slash brand code brand saves you 10% at checkout. So if you use the code brand, you'll get 10% off. Don't wait until it's too late. Take control of your health with the wellness company's medical emergency kit. Thank you. Now let's get into this. And of course, the full context is that this is much bigger than one single speech. Jen Psaki, she knows the game, huh? She's been a White House press correspondent before. So she knows, rewind 10 seconds. Mm, yeah, but Trump is always saying stuff a bit like this. No, he's not always saying stuff a bit like this. He says stuff that's sort of colorful and florid and casual and idiomatic and the argo of ordinary people, which basically the legacy media and the Democrat party have forgotten how to speak because they hate ordinary people in my view. But what there are is a bunch of examples of I'd make myself dictator for 
a day. Other similarly repurposed, rebooted, cut and shut pieces of language that have been pieced together to create a jigsaw of deception. Now, you know where I stand on this. If I had to vote for someone, I'd vote for Bobby Kennedy. But I'm not American and I won't be voting for anybody because I believe in massive institutional change and decentralization of power. And that's the conversation that I'd like to have. But an important conversation to have is Trump's popularity continues to rise because of the deception of the establishment. And here's another example of it. We all know by now that Trump's allusions to political violence are not merely rhetorical. His supporters take them literally. That's part of the big problem here. Also, look at that casual dismissal. His supporters, 51%, he's polling at 52%, this guy. His supporters, all of those people, your loved ones, your families, your neighbors, they're all idiots. Let's just dismiss them as idiots. Let's turn them into terrorists. They used to say stuff like that about Muslim people. Oh, the problem with Muslim people is they take the Quran too literally. You'll still find people that will say stuff like that. Legacy media have stopped doing that because they've pivoted now to being superficially, at least, supportive of people from minority cultural groups and attacking blue collar people. And he knows that too. So no, we did not miss the full context. This was not some meandering off message comment. This is his message. What do you think that he was talking very specifically, like where he went, President G, if you're watching, he knows who I am. All of these like normal Trump stuff. Then talks about tariffs and manufacture of the car industry, presumably in a place where manufacturing cars is significant. It was Ohio, wasn't it? I don't know enough about their economy to identify how significant that is there. But what he wasn't doing is now, and now that's the end of that message, bloodbath. Now, unless you think he's using literal neuro-linguistic programming and manipulative techniques, you know, and I don't think he is. I'll tell you who is using that, the legacy media. They're saying, right, God, Jesus, we've got the word bloodbath. Brilliant. This is brilliant. He said bloodbath. Okay, let's escalate this. You know, they're not applying that kind of forensic analysis, are they, to the wars they're supporting in the Middle East? They're not applying that kind of analysis to the ongoing Ukraine-Russia conflict. They don't want to talk about that at all. They don't want to talk about language. They just want to fund it. They don't want to audit the Pentagon. The Pentagon ain't passed an audit in the last six years. Trillions of dollars. No reckoning for Iraq. No reckoning for Afghanistan. No understanding of the complexity of what's happening between Ukraine and Russia. No recognition of the futility, desperation and awfulness of what's happening in Gaza. No recognition of the ridiculousness of amplifying tensions with China. I thought for a moment it might be bloodbath, oh, it might escalate a war against China. But they won't say that because they like that idea. They'll have a war with China or Russia or whoever. I know different parties have different superpowers they want to do a nuclear war with and that's what we're voting for these days. Who do you want to die at the hands of? Uh, China? Boo! We prefer to die at the hands of Russia in a nuclear war. That's because we're progressive. He's talking about a bloodbath for America. It's laid out in the terms of it. The guy's show is called Morning Joe. You'd think right now, he'd fucking wake up. And these idiots uh, on Twitter, uh, these idiots uh, on, 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 on cable news, these idiots on Sunday shows, going, well, yeah, well, presidents, you know, he was talking only about the auto industry and this is one more, it's just bullshit. This news space has become so hysterical that they've become parodies odd inverted parodies of everything they used to loathe. I bet I could tell you what that dude would think about Rush Limbaugh. He'd go, oh, Rush Limbaugh, hate speaker. He was a ridiculous figure. But he's like doing voices and saying people are idiots and cursing live on the television. What are they becoming? What is their platform now? From where are they talking down to us? They're not coming down from Mount Sinai with tablets telling us stuff anymore. They're hysterics. They're Cassandras. They're lunatics lying live on television because they know in the old days they would have got away with that because there wouldn't be footage everywhere of Donald Trump saying, you know, it's specific to the car industry. And now they can't handle it anymore. Their viewers are declining. Trust in them is declining. The advertising revenue is down. It's over. All they've got left is, don't vote for this guy. He's crazy. And the more they do it, the more it seems like, how crazy? How much worse can he be than these warmongers that you're telling us are so fantastic? Let me say that at 6.15 a.m. It's just bullshit. He knew what he was doing. We're not stupid. Americans aren't stupid. He was talking about a bloodbath. Sometimes a bloodbath means a bloodbath. And when he finishes by saying, and that's just going to be the least of it, seriously, these people may be stupid. We're not. I think they sort of are stupid. And I think they think that we're stupid. I think they're desperate. I think everyone should just like loosen their ties and relax a little bit and go like, what is it that we need to do to live in this country together? Or should we look at an entirely different model? Or are we going to try to perpetuate this odd system that requires endless war and the supplication of an entire population indefinitely just because there is a liberal class that can get fat on the spoils? He's even predicting a bloodbath. Here's Nancy Pelosi with a new haircut. 
but the same old Nancy. What does that mean? He's going to exact a bloodbath? There's something wrong here. How um, respectful I am of the American people and their goodness. But how much more do they have to see from him to understand that this isn't what our country is about? Praising Hitler, praising the Russians. It said, what's wrong with Russia? They defeated yeah. Hitler. This is a political class that thinks that it's enough to wear a, a shamrock on your lapel because it's near St. Patrick's Day and a yellow and blue bangle because of the Ukraine war and never ever mention that she sits on committees that preside over the regulation of the technological industry and is married to someone who's made millions and millions of dollars from investing in the technological industry. I can't ever get beyond that. I can't believe in her rhetoric any more than I can believe in her hair colour. What about the millions of Americans who risked or gave their lives? One of the things we've become aware of recently is the way that Google facilitates particular news stories. We spoke to Robert Epstein about this story that Google is used to manipulate news narratives to ensure that we're given particular perspectives. And this is a lovely demonstration of that. So if you Google the phrase Trump bloodbath, look at what you get back. Almost as if the legacy media is one corresponding entity regulated by the trusted news initiative that immediately pounce if they see an opportunity taking down dissenting voices and I've been on the wrong end of that of course and using stories like this to facilitate a pre-existing agenda. Bloodbath also is a pretty evocative image you know a bath full of blood or whatever people bathed in blood but again to remind you that there are wars all over the world now some of which are can't rightly be called wars because of the dynamics between the two fighting forces that euphemistically refer to them as involved where there is blood where 30,000 people have been killed in a matter of months that would not be possible without the tacit and sometimes explicit support of the American government and your taxpayer dollars. But the word bloodbath is a metaphor that's been used consistently. And if you think it's just a sort of a MAGA Trump phrase, well, here's Rachel Maddow using it. But as Politico.com reports tonight on the, quote, bloodbath at the RNC, Headlines calling it a, quote, bloodbath. Be a bloodbath. Not only is it going to be a bloodbath, but after they leave New Hampshire, it's a bloodbath on her home turf. She's actually saying bloodbath so much. I don't know what she's talking about. Nobody's saying her own name too much. Russell, Russell, Russell. I've, I've glitched. I've gone through the matrix. That's really and tough. Trump has left a lot of corpses in his wake. I mean, we yeah. can count the bodies as part of the, quote, MAGA drive to take over Maricopa County. And the headline refers to it as an impending bloodbath. Columnist Charles Blow has a new piece for the New York Times entitled A Biden Bloodbath. 2018 midterms, you can bet that they 100 percent are fearing a slaughter. In fact, the word bloodbath yeah. and massacre come up frequently. The Republican Party will be destroyed. It's going to be a bloodbath. There's going to be a bloodbath one way or the other. Changing context and changing the meaning of words is, I think, almost a fingerprint of fascism. It's a way that we can identify new forms of tyranny. When people start to say, this word means this now, this population is this, we have to control that, that's hate speech, this is hate speech, this is what a terrorist is. I think these are great early indicators that we're already in a tyranny. I wouldn't be at all surprised if in the next couple of years there isn't some event that legitimizes further authoritarianism. I think we all feel it, don't we? And these peculiar montages are indications of something quite insidious and pervasive that's happening now. Bloodbath for Bernie Sanders. It's been a bloodbath there, shaping up to be a bloodbath. Head off a bloodbath in next year's crucial midterm. Off-year elections are often a bloodbath. This week's bloodbath for Democrats, a bloodbath at the ballot box. There could be a Republican bloodbath. They'll talk about a bloodbath. Okay, so there we go, bloodbath. Oh, I'm saying it now. Bloodbath, bloodbath, bloodbath. Doesn't mean anything, does it? One of the problems that the propagandist establishment machine has now is that one of its prime assets, the platform X, is owned by Elon Musk. And there are emergent platforms like Rumble, where Stay Free, our daily show, is housed. Musk has come out with an NPC meme. Easy to tell who's an NPC today. On Sunday, X owner Elon Musk criticized those who have posted the fake media narrative that former President Donald Trump called for a bloodbath if he's not elected in November. During a rally in Ohio on Saturday, former President Trump said there would be a bloodbath for the auto industry if he was not elected. In context, he was referring to how many jobs would be lost to China if President Joe Biden were to be re-elected. However, the liberal media cut out the part about the auto industry and spread it as though he was making a violent threat. And we saw that that is what they did. How can they expect us to trust them? Headlines from Politico, Mediate, Independent, as well as a post from the official Biden HQ campaign page suggested that Trump was making violent threats. So here 
is that post from the Biden-Harris HQ. Again, obviously, they cut out the context as uh, ALX remarked on X. Politico's headline read, Trump says the country faces bloodbath if Biden wins in November, with a sub-headline claiming he was painting a dark picture of the US. They've really run with this, haven't they? Another example is a now deleted post from NBC's Joe Scarborough that showed an image from January the 6th, 2021 and said, Donald Trump's America and he is proud of it. Promised another bloodbath if he loses again. He deleted the tweet after Musk responded with, January 6th was not a bloodbath by any definition and Trump was referring to job losses in the auto industry when he used that word. Your post is extremely misleading. Oh, that must have been a terrible one. Ah! Delete! Elon doesn't like it! Delete! Delete! Many left-wing influencers also posted the clip out of context. Political commentator Keith Olbermann posted, This is a terrorist threat. FBI, detain him as he leaves the stage, after which America doesn't give a shit where you keep him. Astonishing, they have become deranged. And almost willingly so. You can see when watching the dude off Morning Joe, Joe, or many of the other commentators that they are kind of infected by an almost religious fervor. When I say religious, I don't mean in a positive way connected to a divine reality, but connected to a set of beliefs that are in a sense not housed in the rationalism that they elsewhere claim is the way forward. Their whole ideology is built on progressivism, progressive technology, progressive values, progressive economy, improvement all the time, everything getting better and better. But because that's plainly not true in so many ways, and it doesn't matter how many rationalist books or think tank pieces emerge that tell me that, well, people used to live on a dollar a day. We can't avoid the fact that there is a burgeoning sense of decline and decay and implosion and despair and war. And these subjects are not reported on. When you live in an age where an actual bloodbath is ignored and deliberately censored and the word bloodbath is amplified into some sort of glorious festival of verbal carnage, you know you are living in strange days indeed. And I believe we can see the DNA of their deception in the inversion of the meaning of terms, in their attempts to demonize a figure that some people like a great deal and some people loathe a great deal. But it is, in my view, ultimately an indicator of failing institutions that need to be radically reformed, remedied and replaced at the level of FDA, FBI, NATO. We're talking about significant significant change required. And because that can never be addressed by these people who are actually pretty cosy in their metropolitan professional class jobs, condemning, loathing and despising ordinary blue collar Americans, all they will do is attack blue collar Americans through the figure of Trump. The irony that what he was talking about is a return of manufacture to America rather than outsourcing manufacture through a sort of an odd nexus of relationships between Mexico and China is, I believe, somewhat significant significant and telling. Whether it's true or not, a significant number of people believe that Donald Trump acts on their behalf and they don't like the establishment and they don't trust the legacy media. And after that fiasco, you have to say they're right. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments and chat? Remember, have a look at our Haiti video and you'll see how tariffs are regularly used. Bill Clinton destroyed Haiti using tariffs. It's a brilliant story, particularly if you've got your suspicions about the Clintons. And I do. Remember, click the link in the description if you want to become a member of our community. Community. We make content like this all the time and we make additional videos. This week, chemtrails, which you will love. It's going to be juicy and we need your support for our movement to grow. Stay free. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.